Chapter 541, Lu Xiaoyu, Wreaking Havoc in the Heavenly Palace Lu Xiaoyu silently packed her luggage. She packed all her daily essentials into the pink luggage bag she had just bought, while her snacks went into the space ring. They were prohibited from bringing snacks on this trip, but who could obstruct the space ring? Wait until I finish training. In the future, I can also save you, said Lu Xiaoyu to Lu Xu, who was standing outside the room door. If I say that I will protect you, I will definitely protect you. I, Lu Xiaoyu, will do as I say. The back of Lu Xu's head began to hurt. How did a passionate young person, resolved to become a heavenly king, spring out from his home? From Lu Xu's distress, plus 199. Lu Xu, will you miss me for these three months? Lu Xiaoyu asked. Who will I miss? Won't you be back in three months? Lu Xu replied absent-mindedly. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 399. Lu Xu, look at me in the eyes and tell me that, Lu Xiaoyu said coldly. Ha! 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 Of course I will miss you, said Lu Xu guiltily. What are you thinking about? Why are you so absent-minded? Lu Xiaoyu was unhappy. I was thinking of how to sell all the magical stones I have now, said Lu Xu. Lu Xu had already sent Little Fury out to find a place similar to a black market near Luo City. Lu Xu felt that when Wan City was not reliable. He wanted to see whether there were any other concealed black markets in Luo City. After the Heavenly Network took control of the situation, they did not exterminate all the secret practitioners. On the contrary, they were raising these practitioners. This was similar to what happened in the past, when they were more strict in order to maintain social stability. They were afraid that someone would commit crimes. But now, the secret practitioners were obedient and did not create much trouble either. Thus the Heavenly Network slightly relaxed their attitude towards them. According to Zhang Yutong, secret practitioners who became vagrants, for example Li Dian, became sleek old men early. There was a fear that if they were forced into a team, they would become the black sheep of the group. Thus, secret practitioners who had committed crimes like Li Dian would not be recruited into organizations. They would either be detained or deployed as spies for the organizations. The Heavenly Network's attitude was very clear, not everyone could join the Heavenly Network. The secret practitioners practiced caution so as to not be caught. If not, the over 10 black markets that had been destroyed in Xiazhou, Yuzhou, and Shanzhou would be their fates too. Lu Xu felt that the Heavenly Network's affairs were none of his business. Now, he wanted to find a suitable black market and sell all his magical stones. The markets had always been determined by supply and demand. Under the current circumstances, supply fell short of demand. Thus, the price of the magical stones would consequently become high as well. Magical stones were originally peddled by members of the Heavenly Network and the Daoyuan class, but there were too few of these peddlers. There was previously a thread on the Golden Foundation forum that said that a rich and powerful person had appeared at a black market in Xiazhou. He had bought a large amount of magical stones for 300,000 apiece. Whatever they had, he bought it all. Rumor had it that this person was the broker of a certain family. The magical stones that he had purchased were to be used to nurture the children of the family. Some of the children had skills and abilities, but were reserved in nature. However, in reality, their ability levels were unnaturally high. Two days later, Lu Xu went to send Lu Xiaoyu off. Over 20 military trucks had been parked in the field of Luo City International School. A group of parents cried miserably while holding on to their children. It felt as if they were sending their children to the war front, never to return. Most of the students were also crying buckets. A small group of students were either curious, or were trying to hold back their tears. One of the parents saw Lu Xu bring Lu Xiaoyu to register and wiped their tears. Why is there a young girl here? Is this the genius you were talking about at home? The student being questioned had a complex expression on his face. Yes, that's her. 
Who is the person beside her? The parent asked, wanting to know more. Oh, he is from the same batch as us. But he did not get into the cultivation college and was sent to the security formation, someone replied. The parent nodded. This is the consequence of not studying. The students beside them held back their opinion. Many people knew that Lu Xu's grades were very good. But they could not understand why he had been assigned to the security formation. In reality, many people still did not know the truth of this world. The reason why they did not know some things was because their level was not high enough. They simply were not supposed to know. Lu Xiaoyu looked at the group of students and parents, shedding tears and bidding. Goodbye. She suddenly thought of what Lu Xu had said two nights ago. One had to first have enough capability and convince the public, before one could become a heavenly king. How do you convince the public? Most importantly, you had to be firm and strong. Lu Xiaoyu calmly turned around and said to Lu. Shh! Lu Xu, don't cry like these people. They're so childish. Her voice was not soft. There was a momentary silence. From Lu Jiangwo's distress, plus 481. From Yi Pei's distress. From Lu Xu's distress, plus 99. Lu Xu felt that the speed at which Xiaoyu earned abyss fruits should be quite fast. In reality, Lu Xu was very clear that the position of Heavenly King would not be given to a child, even if the child had exceptional abilities and had been promoted. A child was not yet mature. Even if Lu Xiaoyu did mature faster than usual, this was no exception. The Heavenly King was the face of the Heavenly Network. There were times when the attitude of the Heavenly King would represent the entire Heavenly Network when facing external forces. So Lu Xiaoyu's current dream of becoming a Heavenly King was only a dream. Furthermore, Lu Xu was very clear that Lu Xiaoyu wanted to become a Heavenly King not because she wanted to bear the responsibility, but because of her rivalry. Under these circumstances, Nia Ting would have no choice but to reject giving the position of Heavenly King to Lu Xiaoyu. Even if Lu Xiaoyu had two Class B experts with her to force the situation, their combat power instantly dropped to an awful state against Nia Ting. Lu Xiaoyu jumped on the military truck without looking back. She was like Sun Wukong I, the great sage equal to heaven who did not care about the sun, the moon, and the stars. She was prepared to wield her Jingu Bang II and wreak havoc in the heavenly palace. Lu Xu hoped that Lu Xiaoyu would not create any major issues while she was there. But Lu Xu reconsidered. Since Lu Xiaoyu now needed distress points as well, then she should just do as she liked. On the other hand, Lu Xu himself had to return to a normal school life and properly sort out his content. He would have to wait for his official high school exams under the strange gaze of his classmates. Within this period of time, he still had to think of a way to turn the magical stones in his hands into cash. This was the gray realm of training his classmates had yet to encounter. Chapter 542 The Search for a Black Market Have you heard? A student in the 3 to 2 classroom suddenly asked. Chao Qingxi, like Jiang Shui, didn't go for the training. She disappeared. Yi Lingling was most concerned about this gossip. She held a bag of lonely god one and asked as she ate, could it be that she participated in the training too, just that no one saw her? That's not possible. The military trucks left two days ago. I saw her at Jandong Market yesterday afternoon. But her classmates said that she has not been attending lessons, explained the student. Wasn't there someone in the group last night who discussed about why Chao Qingxi did not attend the training? Maybe she had gone to complete missions, Yi Lingling said after some thought. She suddenly asked, then Lu Xu. Lower your voice. The student looked in Lu Xu's direction. Lu Xu didn't make it, unlike Chao Qingxi. Don't talk about these kinds of things in front of him. Judging from his current state, he is probably feeling down. Lu Xu had a history textbook in his hands. He flipped to a new page every half a minute. His eyes quickly glanced through the words. 
He was reviewing and still reviewing all the content since the start of high school. His pace was just too fast. In his classmates' eyes, he seemed to be carelessly flipping through the book. But Lu Xu's memory was outstanding. He knew all the content, now, he was simply going through it one more time. Lu Xu was always a well-performing student. If there was no resurgence of supernatural influences, then from Lu Xu's serious attitude, he could achieve success in other domains as well. Yi Lingling could not stand it anymore. Lu Xu, are you planning to repeat a year and take the Cultivation College admission test or? Lu Xu looked at her calmly. I don't want to talk to someone with less than 640 marks. Yi Lingling was dumbfounded. From Yi Lingling's distress, plus 999. From. The classroom was silent for a whole two seconds. Everyone was dumbfounded. It was as if they had returned to before the increase in magical energy when they feared Lu Xu and his test scores. They suddenly realized one problem. Lu Xu was only planning to get into a normal university. They could not just spread gossip about him. But Lu Xu did not care about all these. After all, they were no longer in the same world. The four words, increase in magical energy, was like the sharpest sword that had split their lives apart into two halves. His classmates were still doing their best for the final graduation exam and for their ordinary lives. On the other hand, Lu Xu was destined to walk the difficult road of a practitioner. If Lu Xu told his classmates how many people he had killed, it would probably make them fear him greatly. He was different from the likes of Lu Li. Lu Xu's hands had been stained with blood, the path of a practitioner was paved with dead bodies. Now, there were many puzzles regarding the death of Takashima Tairatsu. Those who were there remained tight lipped about the situation. Even if the conservatives asked Sakurai Yeko, she still kept it a secret. But when spies from the respective organizations came to the base to have a look, there was a common point across all the information they had brought back. Takashima had used the blood sacrifice to forcibly increase his abilities. The fact that he did not create a heavenly vision of 10 kilometers radius meant that he did not successfully advance to Class A. But everyone guessed that even though he was not a Class A, he probably had the power of a top Class B, or even higher. So, who killed Takashima in the end? The identity of this person was the biggest secret that the whole world had their eyes on. The likes of Yi Lingling would never think that this young man could become one of the most dazzling people in this world, if only he had revealed that he was the one who killed Takashima, or accepted Nye Ting's good intentions to become a heavenly king. But such a person was now perfectly happy to sit in the classroom and study. Yi Lingling could not understand, and neither could Nye Ting. On the other hand, Shi Shua Jin laughed until he could not speak. When school ended at night, Lu Xu quickly left the classroom, as if he had regained his role as an aloof character. When his classmates walked out of the classroom, he was already at the school gates. Yi Lingling saw Lu Xu's figure from the corridor and suddenly shouted, Look! Everyone turned to look. But they realized that Lu Xu was just talking to Shi Fei, the current person in charge of the Daoyuan class. One student was uncertain. Look at what? The two of them certainly know each other. Yi Lingling was slightly uncertain too. I think I saw Shi Fei actively saluting Lu Xu. I might have misinterpreted it. Li Xiao's current whereabouts were unknown. Thus, Shi Fei was now in charge of Luo City. Everyone's impression of Shi Fei was that he held the most impressive position in the Luo City branch of Heavenly Network. Shi Fei laughed and asked, Major Lu Xu. Are you going home? He did not know that Lu Xu had been promoted to captain. Although this was not a secret, Nye Ting and Shi Xue Jin did not reveal this to the rest. Lu Xu laughed. Aren't I a member of the security formation? I was planning to patrol this area to see if any practitioners have violated the law. Shi Fei opened his mouth to speak but stopped. He suddenly had an unpleasant premonition. Was Lu Xu going to conduct mischief? There was no need for Lu Xu to patrol now. 
Shi Fei felt that as long as Lu Xu went to school and came back properly, then public order would be maintained. Go do what you have to do. I'll take my leave. Lu Xu did not speak much to Shi Fei. He rushed for the public bus without looking back. Little Fury had helped him to find a strange place. It was still within Wenwan City, but there seemed to be something hidden behind the iron gates at the back. Little Fury's rats had seen the presence of practitioners or metahumans among the people who entered and exited. It was just that the defenses were so strict that even rats could not get in. Lu Xu had planned to go and see what was actually there. He was not worried about the possibility of him falling into a dangerous spot. In Luo City, he had no enemies in the Heavenly Network, let alone this kind of hidden black market. He walked to the gates of Wenwan City. There were no normal customers at night. There were no street lamps inside either, his surroundings were pitch black. Lu Xu often saw people sporadically walk in and out. Those who walked out all suspiciously looked Lu Xu up and down before hurriedly leaving. Lu Xu walked in. As he passed by the shadow of the eaves, he had changed his appearance to look like Gao Shanin. Lu Xu had wanted to use Chen Zuan's appearance, but he could not feign his fat face. He walked all the way in and saw iron gates that were shut tight. A faint ray of light leaked through the crevice in the door, and there were sounds of people talking. Chapter 543 The Lord When Wan City was a street that ended with an iron gate. After opening hours, all the lights along the street were off, only the neon lights flickering on the entrance plaque that read, When Wan City remained. It was in line with the urban lighting policies which obliged shops to keep their signs on at night. At this moment, Lu Xu was still a tad hesitant to enter due to the large amount of magical stones in his possession. How much could a black market consume? In fact, he would rather give it to his comrades in the Heavenly Network, so long as they quoted a reasonable price. After careful consideration, Lu Xu dialed Zhang Yutong's number. Sorry, the number you are dialing is unavailable. What the? Lu Xu's face darkened. Had that old boy blocked his contact? Upon second thoughts, he called Nia Ting. Sorry, the number you are dialing is powered off. Ha! <laughs> it's better this way. You better not regret it later. Lu Xu sneered. He had full confidence in selling out all the magical stones through the black markets. The possibility of overseas customers had also occurred to him, but the price was higher in China due to the restrictions imposed by the Heavenly Network on the availability of stones. Thus, it would not be as profitable to sell them abroad. Lu Xu was unwilling to sell them at a lower price. He had put in great effort to obtain the 92,000 plus magical stones. Besides pillaging the storeroom, he had picked up a few from the blood formation. In the meantime, Zhang Yutong, who was busy marking official documents in Yuzhou, hesitated for a long moment while staring at the incoming caller ID on his phone screen. In the end, he did not pick it up until the screen dimmed again. Actually, he did not block Lu Xu. Instead, he had changed his ringtone to I'm sorry, the number you are dialing is unavailable after being repeatedly disturbed by Lu Xu's phone calls. On the other hand, sitting in the control room situated on the lowest level below Lingjing Lane, Nia Ting suddenly muttered as his eyes scanned through thousands of screen panels simultaneously, he has found the black market. It seems that he's really in a hurry to sell something he got from the collection of gods. Shi Shua Jin flipped a thin page of his threadbound book and asked, Aren't you worried he may cause some big trouble by selling out so many resources in one shot? Are you sure you don't have to interfere? There's nothing to worry about. He won't have too much in his hands, even if he has some, Nia Ting said, rubbing his brows. The collection of gods has strict protocols. With Takashima in the fortress that time, he wouldn't have had the chance to take advantage of them. Shi Shua Jin gave him a brief glimpse. Hopefully. Quietly Lu Xu walked inside and knocked on the iron door. The knocking sound was particularly jarring in the silence of the night. A small window on the door was pulled open with a clang. Lu Xu met the eyes of a skinny, 
cunning-looking man with a mustache, his torchlight shining out of the window. The man asked as he studied the visitor, the Lord's place. Who are you? Lu Xu was stunned. The Lord's place? Which Lord? Before he could answer, the skinny man was losing his patience. Who are you? Lu Xu mused. He probably could not get in without a holy name. Thus, he decided to test the water. I am Kasaya Pa One. From Wangzhou's distress, plus 199. Wangzhou was displeased. The Lord was meant to be an honorific title instead of a holy name, unlike your Kasayapa. Immediately, he closed the window, but it did not budge a little under Lu Xu's fingers. I'm a seller, Lu Xu said. Wang Zhe eyed him sideways. Who referred you here? That caught Lu Xu's attention. Instead of asking what he was selling, the man asked his referrer first. That was vastly different from other black markets Lu Xu had visited last time, as this one placed heavier emphasis on security and secrecy, while the others were more interested in getting the goods into their own hands. A professional business group. This was precisely the kind of black market Lu Xu was looking for. But how could he enter without a legitimate referrer? Wang Zhe said in a condescending tone, pay a deposit if you have no referee. 300,000 bucks for the entrance fee. You can claim it when you leave. You'll be considered an old customer of ours after three successful deals. That was unexpected. Thus, Lu Xu passed a magical stone into the window. Given the current market, the price of one stone had been driven to above 300,000 yuan. As a matter of fact, this price was not too high considering the amount of annual supply, which was lower than 20,000. But cost effectiveness had to be taken into account. For practitioners, one stone could only assist them in their completion of one cycle. There were attempts to increase the price of the stones, though unsuccessfully. On one hand, there were strict restrictions imposed by the heavenly network and on the other hand, people were not blind. They were conscientious customers who only bought goods at reasonable prices. The iron door was pulled open. Wang Zhe took a glance outside and warned him, behave yourself in the Lord's place. Otherwise, you won't get out alive. Violence, conspiracy and counterfeits are prohibited. You may lose an arm or a leg if the Lord catches you. Do you know the Lord's name? Nope. From Wang Zhe's distress, plus 299. Country Bumpkin. Wang Zhe seemed to have gotten the cold shoulder. You've never even heard of the Lord's name. How can you call yourself a Luo City resident? Lu Xu was unhappy too. He'd better check who he was talking to. Lu Xu thought. His face darkened. Do you know Lu Xu? Of course. The national hero Lu Xu. The entire Luo city knows him. Wang Zhe laughed scornfully, as though Lu Xu was insulting his intelligence. Lu Xu took a deep breath. Then do you know Lu Xiaoyu? Yes. He had wanted to rebut using the fact that he did not know Lu Xiaoyu, but the man's reply was totally unexpected. Wait a moment. Why do you know Lu Xiaoyu? Lu Xu was confused. Heish, who in the Wenwan city does not know Lu Xiaoyu? Last month, several idiots offended her and now they can't even gather their lives together. Wang Zhe grinned. I see. Lu Xu seemed to have understood what was going on. Then who's stronger? Your lord or Lu Xiaoyu? The lord, certainly. Lu Xiaoyu seems powerful only because of her magical pets and her elder brother's comrades. With her heavenly a network, we'll be just fine so long as we don't offend her. But if she causes us trouble, our lord has networks in the heavenly network too. Wang Zhe gestured Lu Xu to enter. Lu Xu could not differentiate whether he was telling the truth or not. He smiled coldly with malice written all over his face. Bro, you won't live till the third episode if you were in a TV series. Wanna know why? Why? You know too bloody much. 
Chapter 544, Family Schemes Further inside, ten meters to the left was a door guarded by a few men. Under the faint light, they were drinking glasses of Urguo to one and snacking on fried peanuts. They all greeted Lu Xu with a cold stare. Before Lu Xu walked to the end of the road, Wang Xia had rushed back to the gate after he had received a message. But this time, he pulled it widely open. Sir, you must be Mr. Gao. By the Lord's command we will show you around the place. Feel free to let us know if there is anything that catches your eyes, Wang Xia said with a flattering smile. A group of five entered the place. The leader's overcoat was unbuttoned, revealing the white suit inside. He had an air of elegance. Behind him were three Class D fighters and walking next to him was a young lady, whose energy waves could not even be detected by Lu Xu. Even commoners should have a trace, although faint, of energy waves, because everything in the world consisted of mana. However, it seemed as if the girl had shielded her energy from the outside. Lu Xu studied the girl carefully. It was perhaps his first time to see such a tall girl. Clad in a red windstopper zipped all the way till right below her nose, it was difficult to tell her gender if not for her feminine facial features. Lu Xu's height was 185 centimeters, but the girl looked just as tall as him. Lu Xu stepped aside to allow the group to proceed inside first. Mr. Gao and the girl ignored him completely, while the three bodyguards fixed everybody present with their cool stares. Walking in front, the girl said softly, The Lord? I'm afraid they are just little brats who have never seen the world. Nowadays lords are worthless. Wang Jia and the rest immediately held their breath. They knew they were in no position to offend this group of people. Displeased, Lu Xu objected. Are you saying you despise our lord? From Gao Song's distress, plus 199. From Nailin Kei's distress, plus 269. In fact, Lu Xu instinctively felt that Nailin Kei was the true leader of the group. Thus, he had purposely provoked her in an attempt to know her name. Who knows, maybe Shi Fei would be of help to Lu Xu in digging out her background. The group glared at Lu Xu in astonishment, while the latter was perfectly at ease. Wang Zhe was freaking out. Since when did our lord becomes yours? He explained at once, he's not one of us. Believe me. Mr. Gao laughed. He's not worth our time. Let's go. Then, under Wang Zhe's guidance, the group walked into a hut while Lu Xu followed behind. Inside, there was a pathway leading downwards at an angle. A slogan was visible in the glow of incandescent lights installed on either side of the passage. It read, The Great PLA 2. Apparently, this place used to be a bomb shelter. Who would have expected that such a place had transformed into the base of a black market nowadays? The noise grew louder as they went deeper inside the tunnel. At this point in time, Lu Xu could even hear someone shrieking, bite it. Bite its neck. The smell down there was not as nasty as expected, which could probably be due to a renovated ventilation system. Lu Xu became even more curious about the real identity of this mythical lord. How did he manage to run such a large-scale black market under the heavenly network's nose? There were a group of people surrounding a fenced zone. Inside, two dogs were engaged in an intense fight. One of them, a strong dog of an unknown species, was thrown under immense momentum onto the barrier, which growled without breaking. This excited the spectating gamblers even more. Sensing that something was up, Lu Xu eyed the dogs and realized that they were actually two class F magical beasts. Were the customers so rich? Gambling on magical beast fights? Outside the zone there were staff responsible for recording the details of the bets. The amount of the bet and the gamblers' names were written down clearly. There were close to a hundred vendors trading in the spacious bomb shelter. Lu Xu suspected that there could be another exit here, for the owners must have taken escape routes into consideration in case the Heavenly Network raided the place. However, he did not see any. Lu Xu decided to send Little Fury over at night to check out the premise. 
The rats were the most suitable candidates for digging out all the exits of the shelter. At this moment, Wang Zhe got impatient seeing that Lu Xu was still following them. I thought you were a seller. Hurry up, go and do your business. Lu Xu smiled and did not talk back. As soon as he found a vacant space to set up his stall, Lu Xu started crying his wares with a stick of Chinese chives in his hands. Chinese chives, Chinese chives. If men eat them, their women can't take it. If women eat them, their men can't take it. If both the men and women eat them, the bed can't take it. Wang Zhe was confused. Bro, you don't have to sell your chives here. You can do it outside since it's not banned by the Heavenly Network. Are you saying you despise my Chinese chives? Idiot. From Wang Zhe's distress, plus 666. Wang Zhe had a point. In fact, 10% of all earnings in this black market had to be surrendered to the Lord as a form of sales tax. Meanwhile, Nalin K shot Lu Xu a scornful look upon hearing his advertisement. A pathetic chives vendor. A hierarchy system was widely acknowledged among black market vendors. The top tier sold magical weapons, followed by magical beasts, magical stones, and edible products in that sequential order. A middle-aged vendor beside Lu Xu asked him with an interested smile, how much are your chives? At the moment, Lu Xu was observing Gao Song and Nalin K with his peripheral vision. Thus, he answered without much thinking, 300 bucks per stick. 1,000 bucks for three sticks. Great. Give me three sticks. Lu Xu counted his money and gave him three sticks. After a while, the man realized something was not right. Brother, did you sell bamboo rats before? Three bucks per rat and ten bucks for three rats three? From Chain Wukong's Distress, plus 666. Chapter 545, The Real Iron Plate Lu Xu shoved the money into his pocket. It did not make sense for him to give up the money he had just received. He asked curiously, Bro, is this the first time these people have come here? Chen Bokong sadly lit a cigarette. This is the first time I've seen them. But people like them have come before. I reckon that they're from that family. We may have to move again. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Why do we have to move again? Shouldn't we be happy that a tycoon has come? He <laughs> he, from the likes of it, you probably don't go out very often. We painstakingly bring in these cheap magical stones from overseas to earn some profit. But when we encounter these tycoons, our days become hard. They are not sincere about buying these magical stones, Chen Bakong said with deep meaning. Lu Xu realized that the profit these secret practitioners earned from selling the magical stones was their means of living. They definitely could not enter by the normal route, but they were practitioners after all. Their physique was stronger. It was not impossible for them even if they had to cross mountains to enter the country. The profit they earned was enough for them to live. But Lu Xu was slightly curious. Wasn't there a tycoon who bought everything before? If so, wouldn't the secret practitioners live more comfortably as a result? After all, there was supply and demand. Chen Bakon laughed. You're talking about what happened at Xiazhou, right? I was there too. It was true that one magical stone cost 300,000. But that family wanted to leave some room for maneuver. Raising the price of your goods was simply a favor. Immediately after that, they used their influence as a family to take control of the entire black market. Doing business under them would mean that higher handling charges needed to be paid. In the first place, we do not earn a lot of money. Demanding a commission of 30% was equivalent to asking us to leave. That was why I came to Luo City. But it seems like they have already set their eyes here. So that was what had happened. It seems like these big families had turned their attention to the underground black markets after their unsuccessful attempt at interfering with the heavenly network. The arrival of Nalan K and Gao Kangi most likely meant that another family wanted to control the Luo City black market. 
like the family who had gained control over the Xiaozhou black market. Now, the seven major cultivation colleges across the country had started lessons. They were afraid that in the future, all the secret practitioners would slowly gather in this area. The concentration of black markets in the city where the seven cultivation colleges were would also exceed that of other cities, by leaps and bounds. The first thing that the black market had to consider was the circulation of commodities. Were there others places that had more practitioners than the seven major cultivation colleges? No. Furthermore, the richness of magical energy was also an important factor when the secret practitioners chose their cities. After all, they had to train as well. Even the Heavenly Network was very particular when they chose the location for the schools. The richness of magical energy at the school was much higher than in other places within the city. Luo City could be said to be a place that the military commanders of the respective big families fought over. Gaozong and Nalin K walked through. They did not take a look at the tools nor goods, but stopped when they saw the magical stones. One piece for $320,000. I want everything you have. The stall owner in front of Gaozong was wild with joy. Boss, I only have two stones here. But the process was extremely complicated. I was almost caught by the heavenly network. $330,000, Nalan K was somewhat impatient. She did not seem to have the intention of haggling. Rather, it seemed that she was using this price to pressure the owner. Lu Xu suddenly felt that this robust lady had very delicate features. This pedestrian had also come prepared with a large amount of funds. Once the price was settled, the three bodyguards behind her took out their notebook and began the transfer of funds to the owner. But Lu Xu was suddenly more certain of his opinion. Nalin K, the robust lady, was probably the true leader of this group of people. If not, how did she have the authority to discuss the price? The person called Gao Song was probably the broker for Nalin K's family. Lu Xu was not sure why Nalan K would personally come down to the market and buy training resources. Many stall owners immediately gathered close when they heard Nalan K's price. They did not have much in their hands either, only one or two pieces. The most one owner had was five pieces. But Gao Song did not reject anyone. They took whatever the owners had. Some of the owners wanted to suggest their own price, but Gao Song did not even care about them. Without Nalan K's words, he would not add a single cent. Nalan K looked at Wang Zhe and laughed. Where is your lord? I haven't seen him. Lu Xu's eyes lit up. To be honest, he also wanted to see who this lord was. But he knew that Nalan K's intention of wanting to see their lord was probably not so simple. She had come with her family to take control of the black market. If their lord could not bear the pressure of these big families, they would either be controlled by these families, or vanish. It was all possible. Wang Zhe laughed obsequiously. My lord says that his stomach is not feeling well. Nalan Kei and Gao Song looked at each other. They did not expect that the so-called black market operator did not dare to even show his face. This was beyond fear. Did he think that the family would not do anything if he did not appear? The family had always feared the heavenly king and did not dare to mess with them. This was why they took their money and cleared public places of visitors. This was equivalent to cutting the knot as smoothly as you tied it. There had been a family who had used the black market business for a mass killing. But the heavenly network was always ruthless to these families. The Heavenly Network got rid of black markets the day after these families seized control of them. The Heavenly King's meaning was also very clear. They prioritized stability. Whoever thought that force could conquer all, the Heavenly Network would use absolute force to talk to you. This time, the families were quite frank about it. Who could defeat Nye Ting? But this lord probably did not quite understand that one or two deaths would not disrupt the stability. If the black markets in the country all broke the rules to create new ones, it would be like a dispute between a snake and a dragon. 
At this moment, a robust figure emerged from the black market bomb shelter, pulling up his pants. The figure wore a pair of large sunglasses that covered his face. Ha! 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 It would be inconsiderate of me to not welcome my guests. Have you taken an interest to some of the goods? Nalin K and Gao Song looked at each other. They did not expect that the Lord would appear now. Lu Xu, on the other hand, felt a tremble from the deepest part of his body. Damn. Even though he wore large sunglasses, but Lu Xu was just too familiar with this figure? Li Xiao, Heavenly King Li. He had recently disappeared, and now he was the lord of an underground black market? A legendary heavenly king, operating a black market? What was this? So Wang Zhi's words just now that their lord knew people within the heavenly network was complete nonsense. Your lord was a heavenly king. Ha! Ha! Lu Xu now wanted to see what would happen when the family bumped into Li Yixiao. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens